Now I want to start with uh, the PM. I'm going to be speaking to Dennis Shanahan now. Uh, Dennis, let's start with uh, the PM who is really earning his Airbus Albo nickname. Uh, let me explain why. Since becoming Prime Minister around 18 months ago, Anthony Albanese has travelled right across the world. We've had him in Jakarta, to Paris, to London, to Fiji, San Diego, Lithuania. In fact, around 20 trips, uh, not, not bad for such a short period. Next step on his world tour is Beijing. Uh, Dennis Shanahan, uh, tell me, <laughs> he seems to be a lot happier when he's out of the country. Now, I know it's important for him to meet with our allies and meet with foreign leaders, but we are in a cost of living crisis and the Prime Minister seems to be removed from that battle. Well, look, uh, I've always defended Prime Ministers who travel. They have to travel to so many of these meetings and there are now so many more meetings that... G20 and APEC and ASEAN, uh, Chogham even. So there are all sorts of meetings that have to occur and they occur during the summit season, uh, September, October, and so that means Prime Ministers have to travel a great deal. There's no doubt that Anthony Albanese looks happy when he's overseas. Uh, he went to Japan within <laughs> a, a, a 48 hours of becoming Prime Minister. Uh, he had to go, but he does look happy on the world stage. Uh, his problem is that by looking happy, people are saying, what, is, what about what is happening back here where you're in Washington mm. or London or wherever? What about us? And there are two problems here. One, that whenever a Prime Minister travels it, during hard times, it looks bad. It, he can't do anything. He can say it's hard work as many times as he likes, but it doesn't cut through. You know, he's going to an official dinner at the White House, it's very hard to make that look like hard work. I've attended a few and it's not really hard work. Uh, it is quite a, a sumptuous time. So they are the appearances of what's happening. The other problem that he has is he has to come back from these trips with something to say, well, that's why I actually went to the United States. I've come back and here are these job creating opportunities. Uh, the other problem he's got, and this is something that comes from his own domestic media management, is that when he's overseas, he tries to control questions from the media, even from the US media in, on this trip, uh, where they are asking about things which are occurring in Australia. And so they really think that the, uh, the you know, it's all about what he's doing. And I think that this is his problem, that he, he has to try and address all these domestic issues while he is travelling, trying to do so and say, no, 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 invoking the so-called London Convention that Bob Hawke just uh, invented for a very short time, uh, he has to actually, when he's overseas, talk about what is happening in Australia. He also, I think, has to start to consider thinking, well, maybe we should have Parliament sitting when he's travelling and have... Richard Miles, who did quite a good job the other day uh, as acting Prime Minister, uh, because there is so much travel and the Prime Minister can't expect to do this without trying to talk about what is happening in Australia. And these are big issues in Australia. And at the moment, the trips he's been on haven't actually contributed to lifting the uh, mm. cost of living pressures or contributing to large numbers of new jobs in Australia. Now, the Albanese government has abstained from a UN vote calling for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. The move has uh, sparked backlash on both sides. The Muslim community says the PM is supporting war over peace. But we've also got the Jewish community who's deeply unhappy with this, Dennis. The, the government didn't back the US and Israel, which voted against the motion. What are your thoughts on Australia abstaining here? Well, of course, uh, the Labor Party's uh, policy on the Middle East has changed. It happened at the National Conference uh, earlier this year. And so there is now a different attitude towards Israel and the occupied territories. Now, what is happening within the, within the government 
The real problem for Anthony Albanese is, is not so much the abstention at the UN. The UK also abstained. Uh, and uh, there is a, an argument here that, you know, should we have gone with the US, particularly while Anthony Albanese was there having a big dinner with President Biden. And so there is an argument that we should have stood more clearly with Israel. But the UK didn't. They abstained the same. The real problem on the Middle East at the moment is the mixed messaging coming from senior ministers within the Albanese government. Anthony Albanese has been saying all the right things while he's been in Washington to Joe Biden about Israel and the terrorist attack from Hamas uh, and the protection of civilian lives, all civilian lives. But the problem he's got is that he has very senior ministers back in Australia giving out different signals, refusing to condemn claims of genocide, making claims of war crimes against Israel, and even suggesting uh, in a transcript which wasn't fully released uh, until later that you know there are civilian murders occurring on both sides. This isn't civilian casualties. The word is mm. murders, and that includes Palestinians. Now, there are clearly civilian Palestinian deaths, uh, and that is because that's what Hamas is trading on. That is what Hamas is using. This is an extremely difficult position to be in, but I'm afraid that the Australian government can't have it two ways. Uh, we have been a long friend of Israel. This was a massive terrorist attack. It was mass murder terrorist attack on Israelis. They are trying to limit civilian casualties, but that is also the point that Hamas has wanted to limit Israel's retaliation by the use effectively, not just of Israeli hostages, including babies, but Hamas, uh, uh, Palestinian civilians. So this is a very difficult time and having mixed messages about or a moral equivalence towards Israel and Hamas mm. is not going to work politically or morally uh, for the government. Well said. Now, we've had all of Australia's living prime ministers, except Paul Keating, uh, expressing their support for Israel and calling for solidarity with Jewish Australians in an arrest statement. Uh, that was wonderful to see. But I do want to move on to uh, another issue. I'll be speaking to David Adler later in the program about what's happening in Israel. But ACT Greens leader and Attorney General Shane Rattenbury has called on the Prime Minister to enter into a formal coalition with the Greens, the coalition would include promoting Greens MPs to Cabinet. Oh, goodness me. Can you imagine Trade Minister Adam Bant or maybe you can put him in charge of energy? Uh, Dennis, that would be scary, scary stuff. This would be a proposal for the next election if Anthony Albanese uh, were in minority government. Well, I, I don't think Anthony Albanese wants a Andrew Barr of it, if I could put it that way. Uh, they don't want to <laughs> signal that they will go into a formal agreement with the Greens, but there is a much greater chance now of Labor going into minority government, and that gives the Greens, federal level and obviously at the ACT level, uh, the, a much greater opportunity to claim that they should be working with Labor and, of course, ensuring their own survival and their own sense of power. I, I don't think it will happen. There won't be a formal arrangement before the next election, but we have seen joint elections uh, and governments in Tasmania and the ACT, and the Greens want to spread their influence. Dennis Shanahan, thank you so much for your time. And some would say that the, there has been an unofficial alliance there for some time. Labor would not be getting elected without those Greens preferences. Always a pleasure, Dennis. Thank you. Thanks.